Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Our, we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course. Trying to do that at 100 miles an hour and yeah. sometimes <laughs> I mess up a little bit, yep. All right, today, Brad, we're gonna talk about whether or not your shoulder pain is a rotator cuff tear. And we're gonna show you how to tell. We're sure. give you some tests right. to work on. A lot of times people get pain and you know they hear about this, well, they, some people call it rotary cup. Or, or yeah, they, or, rotator cup. My, mo my cup. rotator cup is all messed up because yeah. I got, yeah. And oftentimes it can be something else uh, so this will give you some indication. Right, rotator cuff, it's four muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. Very four nice. muscles that come together, and usually a, t a cuff tear is not in the muscle itself, it's in the tendon. The muscle narrows up, becomes a tendon, right. attaches to the bone, and that's how it can, it can tear off. Later on, we're going to show you a nice model. Yeah, we got a nice that. model with that. We can show it you on here, so, too. So, yeah, hold on and watch, because some of the people are, ooh, this, we just lost the humorous, are, uh, are new to this channel and haven't watched it before. Yeah, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. I got a video uh, subscribe button over here on the left. You're yeah, right. There. And we provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. There you go. All right. So the four muscles, we're going to test them. We're, let's, uh, let's start off with some of these. Brian. Okay. Okay. The first one is the empty can. Um, so if I stand, and I'm going to bring my hand like I'm emptying a can. Right. So you go down. You can do it that direction. So I'm going to bring it like direction. 30 degrees out right here. And then I'm going to have you push down on it, Brad. Okay. And if it just gives way or it hurts and it... You know, there's a sign that you might have a little bit of impingement right. or that you actually tore the muscle. Right. You know, and at home, if you want to do it with the other hand, the good side, so you have a feeling what, what the good one feels yeah, like. You, you could can push down on your own. Right. Yeah, you can certainly do it on your own and is push down like that. Yeah. All right, next test, uh, the drop arm. In this one, you're going to go ahead and bring your arm all the way up like this. Yep. Lift it up. A little bit out to the side, sure. Brad. And then slowly, just try to lower it down slowly. And yeah. if it just gives way... That means there's probably a tear and that you, you, you've had a little bit of a... Uh... Yeah, because chances are you're not going to be able to get it up here by yourself. That's why you're, you're going to help it out. And if it hurts too much to get up there, you may want to go to the next test. It depends on how severe your shoulder is. Next one, Brad, yeah, is external rotation where you're going to put your hands like this. This right. is where you do kind of need someone to help you. Yep. Um, so if you do that... And this one, I always have problems in the clinic with, with people getting their position right. So 90 degree bend in the elbow and not back here or not like this, but... It's right there, so you're kind of in a position like yep. that. And you're going to push on both of them at the same time. Right. And if that one gives way? Almost always. It doesn't take much. And, that, yeah. the, you know, if there's a rotator cuff problem, that is how to go in with very little pressure. I feel like the rock and socking robots. Remember it's that? been a long time. Yeah. I got one of those when I was six years old. All right, next one, Brad, is you actually just take your hand, and you're going to put it flat on your back like yep. this, and you're going to try to lift it away from your back like sure. this. Can we do a profile on that? Then we can see sure. that, that gap right in here. And you're you're going to have difficulty doing that. Right. Uh -huh. So those are the four tests. And if you find out like all three, you can't do all three. Right. I mean, you're starting to lean towards the possibility that you might have a tear. Right. And don't get too excited about this because you haven't done this before. You know, if you got a skilled therapist, it's much easier for us to tell. Uh, so just go on and just think, well, you know, there are the possibilities there. So let's, let's talk about a little bit what you're going to do if you find out you do have a tear, Brad, mm -hmm. and okay. what, what has happened, why this tear happened, sure. and even how to prevent tears, I, I'd say, is a good way. I, I do want to say one thing. If you go like th if you're trying to do this, and you've got this kind of stuff going yeah, on, you're swinging. that's a really good indication that it's a tear or it's something else serious in your right. shoulder. You can get uh, pretty bad tendonitis even that can, you know, rotator yeah. cuff tendonitis, and, yeah. and, and, and it can be so fired up that, so... Let's talk about why you get a tear. So this, this red band here, in, in this case, we're actually going to use it to represent the supraspinatus muscle. That's the muscle that most commonly is tore, right. uh, the, the tendon. Yeah. Should and, we show them on this? If, if we yeah. were to pull that off of there. And Brad, do you want to just take it up there and show? Sure. Lonnie, can you, you got that? So here's your shoulder blade, and there's that bony part of your shoulder blade. Everyone can feel that. So... It's like this. Yeah, right right like that, and there's that bony part right there. Just above that, that soft spot is the muscle here, supraspinatus, by far the most commonly injured muscle, I would have to say, right. with the rotator cuff injury. But it comes up underneath your chromium, that's another bone here, and it's right there, and it connects. 
to the humerus where the ball is, it connects over the ball, and it has, plays a great role with mechanics right. of doing this or this. So, and it's the tendon there is what tears. Oh, you sure. want to show that, Brad? Yeah. He's going to grab a pen. So here's the muscle. It narrows up and becomes a white tendon here. And it, it gets, we're going to show you in a second why the, there's some rubbing that happens on yep. here if you get impingement. And eventually it can fray and tear. Right. Just right from the bone. And if you've got a complete rupture like that, Oftentimes you'll do surgery. Don't have to, but yeah, there's three grades basically. There's a partial thickness tear where you might just even have a little pinhole that, mm -hmm. that's a little sure. frayed or looks like a kind of frayed uh, frayed rope. Right, you know? exactly. Um, or you can have a full thickness tear, which still doesn't mean that it it, it can't heal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can go all the way through the tendon. The one that's bad is when you get the full thickness tear and it retracts. It actually pulls away from the bone. Right, so you get a big gap, and then it's hard to get them. Yeah, it, it doesn't want to, it won't come back together again. Right. But the thing about that, Brad, is I've had people who have had that mm -hmm. and they still didn't have surgery and they did fine because some of the other muscles helped take over. Sure. The body so, is amazing. Yeah, it can the body can, itself. can heal itself. So all this all starts from, Brad, which, which you're well aware of, is what we call impingement. So this bone here, there's not that much space here. And the bone can go up in here, can pinch. Again, we can look if that red thing is the muscle and the tendon. It can get pinched right there. Can you see that, Lonnie? Do it again? Okay. Let's, let's bring it like that. So right in there, when you get that, you can see the two bones right here pinching into that tendon. And it, it's just like taking a pair of pliers and pinching it. Or if it doesn't pinch real hard, but you do it 30, 40, 50 times all in you know, one time working on the ceiling or painting the ceiling, whatever, and you end up with a real sore shoulder, that very likely could be the mechanism. Yeah, if you have poor posture mm -hmm. and you're going like this, I'm pinching my shoulder right now. Yep. You sleep with your arms overhead at night, yep. that all night long you could be putting a little pressure sure. on that tendon right. and, and the blood is not flowing as well. So these are yep. things you want to avoid um, you know, so that you don't end up with a rotator cuff injury. Um, so the goal with, with treatment, Brad, by the way, often is trying to open that space up again. Sure, yep. And, and so one of the first things we always want to have people do is, is really get really good posture. Sure. And so we do sure. shoulder squeezes. Right. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. You can do it from yeah. there. Oh, go I'll ahead. This way? Yep. So he's going to squeeze those shoulder blades together. From the profile, it looks like this. I tell people, I want you to have your head up with good posture. Chest goes out. Shoulders go back. And you can do these every hour throughout the day. Yep. Um, you can do these preventively, or let's say you have a rotator cuff tear, you, should, you can start doing these immediately. Um, we'll discuss what you can do the first right. four Th This weeks. is one of the exercises for one of those people that are really painful. Say, let's start this as long as it doesn't hurt or create sharp pain. But it does usually say, oh, they feel a stretch in this area, and that's what we're looking for. Open that up. And that's the first step. Right. Good posture, too, like always. We'll sure. make sure. So let's say you find, again, you have a tear. We're, we'll talk about what you're going to do the first four weeks. You're going to first start off with the, the, the shoulder squeezes. Yep. You can use ice. Sure. You can use an anti-inflammatory like that. the NSAIDs. Um, and you can even use a sling for comfort if, if, Absolutely. It, if you need to. I, uh, I'll have someone, you know, put the, you know, they'll say by halfway through the workday, I can hardly hold my shoulder, but this feels really good. And I say, well, get a sling on it. Not only that, it lets other people know you got a shoulder problem so they don't come up and say, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you want to give me a pillow too, Brad? It's funny now, but, uh, you know, yeah, I know it's not <laughs> funny when it happens to you. Exactly. <laughs> Like that's saying a big thing on there is like, do not kick me. Dude. Right, exactly. Um, the other thing is even when you're sitting in a chair, I'd like to see you have it supported. Sure. So if you don't have the sling on, um, at night you're going to want to support it. Yeah. When you lay on your side or whatever, we're going to do a whole um, video on how to properly position your uh Sure, shoulder. you bet. So you got to look for that. That's coming up in the next couple of days is a video on how to position your arm sure. for shoulder mm -hmm. pain. Um, and then once you... Got to get through the positioning thing. You're also going to want to start doing pendulum exercises. Oh, yeah. So, so if I'm using this one here, it's just a gentle, relaxed, starting to get some movement and keeping it stretched out right. while it's healing. Right. And you can do circles. You can go clockwise. You can go counterclockwise. And there is some controversy if there's some therapists watching. They might say, oh, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to get the arm moving from the, the body motion and it's completely relaxed. But I think there's a little 
It depends on what are you, for, you know, as far as pain wise. Yeah, I've heard some people not to say even do pendulum exercises. Yeah, you know, so. I, I only do them if people, usually they say it feels really good and relaxing, so then I'll say let's do them. Um, the last thing you're going to uh, try is you can start doing some uh, capsule stretches. The, the shoulder is surrounded by a capsule, a tough mm -hmm. fibrous material. Right. So you can start doing a little bit of stretches because we want to make sure, again, that opens up. we got a lot of room for the, the, the tendon to go through. Right. So one is uh, you're going to stretch the posterior capsule. So you're going to go across. Now, again, if these hurt, I don't want you doing them. Yeah, the, so, some of these probably are going to probably hurt. So then you just back off and yeah. go to the next so one. So a gentle stretch this way. You can stretch the inferior capsule by stretching it this way. Again, yeah. it could be a tough one to do. Yeah, this is maybe or may, may not be comfortable. And you can also go in a doorway and put your arm on the end and stretch this way. Sure. And stretching the anterior capsule. So that'll get you through the first four weeks. And then after that, um, you, you know, you can start some isometric strengthening. We, we've got a there. number of uh, rotator cuff and shoulder strengthening exercises. We'll put more up too in the future. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Thanks for watching.